Uh, this is EC 115 lecture number four. So I um, wanted to add a few more items um, that might be useful for homework number one. So we've seen that for resistor that V and I are related by Ohm's law, but there are two important limiting cases. And those limiting cases correspond to when R is made very, very small in the limit going to zero, which is called a short circuit. And also when R is taken to be very, very high as a limit going to infinity, which is called an open circuit. So these are important limiting cases. And just uh, to give you some explanations further as to what's going on and how we can analyze these circuits. So for a short circuit, uh, when R goes to zero, then what really happens is that the voltage also is forced to zero. So as you make R smaller and smaller and smaller, the voltage across the resistor becomes smaller and smaller and, and the limit goes to zero. So a short circuit can be characterized or can be analyzed by just replacing the resistor with a piece of wire as shown on the right. In the piece of wire, there's no voltage across those two points, right? A, sh a short circuit is basically, you can think about it as a piece of wire with no voltage across it, but the current through it can be anything. And the current through that short circuit uh, is not limited in any way. It could be any value that can be dictated by what's connected around the short circuit. So it depends on the circuit that surrounds or is connected to the short circuit that determines the value of the current. But the voltage, by definition, is equal to zero on a short circuit. Similarly, in open circuit, in this case, the resistor is taken to infinity. You can think about it as a resistance with infinite resistance. So when you have infinite resistance, um, that impedes the current flow, and therefore, higher resistance lower the current. So we can get an idea about that by writing Ohm's law as I is equal to V over R. And as R goes to infinity, um, the current I goes to zero. So as you make the denominator higher and higher and higher on the right side, then you get less and less current. So again, in the limiting case, uh, there's a way to characterize uh, the open circuit. And that's basically done by drawing uh, a pair of terminals, but there's no connection between them. So in that case, the current is forced to be equal to zero. Current cannot flow through an open piece of wire. Current needs a path. So if there's no path, there's no current. And therefore, the um, I think there's some typos here. So this should not be short circuit, but open circuit. So let me mark those. So this should be I open circuit and V open circuit okay so the open circuit current is zero short open circuit voltage can be any value so the open circuit voltage um, can be anything but it needs to be calculated by looking at the circuit around the open circuit right so we cannot just say what VOC is but IOC for an open is definitely equal to zero so that's what we start with in open circuit, we start with the current being zero, and on the short circuit, we start with voltage being zero, and we analyze. So to illustrate what I just talked about here, um, I'm going to talk. I'm going to show you some examples, and these examples are very much uh, similar, you know, except for the numerical values, uh, all the ones given in problem number six in homework number one. So, for example, um, if you uh, look at the circuit that's shown here. Okay, um, let me just not show you the solution yet, but just talk about this problem. So the circuit on the right has a nine volt source, three ohm resistor, and you have an open circuit. So when you have an open circuit, you kind of know what you're going to start with, and you're going to start with the current being zero. So this problem is asking to find VR, IR, and it's also asking you for the power absorbing the resistance. So we basically start with saying, due to the open circuit, the open circuit current is zero, IOC is zero. So um, that's, an, that's a starting point. That's the open circuit uh, condition, right? 
Uh, we're not guessing that that is what the open circuit does. So if the open circuit current is zero, and if we apply uh, a Kirchhoff's current law to that node, the resistor current and the open circuit current are the same. So that means the resistor current must be zero. Because if you apply KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, current is equal to current out at the top node, right? That's what you get. So if the current is zero, by Ohm's law, the voltage is zero. V equals IR. And now we can apply KVL, go around the loop and balance the voltages. The rise is equal to the drops, right? So we have a rise of 9 volts and we have a drop of VR and V of C, right? So we know VR, that's zero. So that means VOC must be 9 volts, right? So if you go around the loop, VS is equal to VR plus VOC. But VR is 0 volts because we just found it in the previous step. So that means the open circuit voltage is the same as the source voltage because there is no drop across the resistor. There's no voltage drop across the resistor. So knowing this, we can calculate the power absorbed by the resistor. It's just VR, IR. Well, that's just 0. So in this circuit, the resistor doesn't absorb any power at all. Okay, so let's look at a case where instead of the uh, voltage source and a resistor, we have a, a current source and a resistor. And the same question, we're asking what's VOC, what's VR, what's IR? Okay, so if we get this problem, again, our starting point is that due to the open circuit, IOC is 0 amps. So I'm looking at the circuit on the right. That's what we start with. Now, if we know that, then we can apply... Uh, KCL, Kirchhoff's current law to the top node. So what's going on there? What's going in? What's coming out? Well, IS is going in, and then IR is coming out, and ISC is coming out. But ISC, um, that's, uh, sorry, not ISC, IOC, the open circuit current. Open circuit current is zero by definition. Uh, that forces the uh, resistor current to be also 2 amp. So the 2 amp that comes out of the source is going through the resistance and none of it is going through the open circuit. So IR is 2 amps. But now we know um, Ohm's law. By Ohm's law, we have VR is equal to 8 volts because it's 4 ohms times 2 amps. Now, if we do a loop uh, for the KVL on the right loop, VR is a rise and VOC is a drop. So rise is equal to drops. So VR is directly across VOC. So that means VOC, the open circuit voltage, must be 8 volts. If you apply a power absorbed rule for the resistor, VRIR gives you 8 times 2, 16 watts. So this is the way to approach this problem. Now, so these two had to do with, uh, these two examples had to do with open circuits. Let's look at some short circuit examples in a similar situation, so the similar values. So let's, let's say we have this. We have a 9 volt, 3 ohm, and then we have a short circuit where we had an open circuit before. So now the question is, what's I short circuit? What's the current going through the short circuit. Now obviously, again if you start on the right, when you have a short circuit, VSC is 0 volts. That's what we start with. That's why it's not being asked for in the problem, because it's 0 volts. So VSC is 0 volts, what can we do? Well we can do a, a, a loop, right? We can do a Kirchhoff's voltage law loop. If we do rise is equal to drops, uh, clockwise, right, as we typically take it. So you're going up by 9 volts, and then you're going down by VR plus VSC. But VSC is 0 volts, therefore VR must be 9 volts. Okay? Now, because if VR is 9 volts, by using Ohm's law, VR over R, you get 3 amps for the current, IR. Now, again, IR is flowing left to right in the resistor, so on the top right corner, if you apply KCL, current in is IR, current out is ISC. We know IR, therefore ISC must be the same. 3 amps. Okay, a applying a power absorb rule here, power absorb for the resistance, VRIR, so that's 9 volts times 3 amps, 27 watts, and that's it. So this is just uh, not too different from what we did before, but uh, we are um, uh, applying one more condition, and that condition is the condition that's imposed by the short circuit in this case. I mean, a short circuit means VO, the short circuit voltage is zero, 
and you have an open circuit, means the open circuit current is zero. That's all we're applying in addition to what we learned before. Um, so last example here, and we'll call it quits. Um, again, the same circuit as uh, in the previous page. So what we're doing here is, okay, we have the circuit. Now we have a short on the right side. And the question is, again, the same. What's the short circuit current? What's VR, IR, and the power absorbed? Okay, again, uh, if there's a short apply, we start with saying VSC, the short circuit voltage is zero volts. So if that's true, then uh, if we do KVL on the right side, the right loop, uh, clockwise on the right loop, you're going up by VR, going down by VSC, so it means VR equals VSC, but VSC is zero volts. By definition, due to the short, that forces the vo resistor voltage to be zero. So VR is zero volts. So if you know VR, you know IR by Ohm's law, that means it has to be zero amps. And if IR is zero amps, if you apply KCL to the top node, currents into the node, the currents out of the node, right? So IS is coming in, uh, and then IR plus ISC is leaving. So what's coming in, two amps, what's leaving? IR plus ISC, but IR is already zero because of the short circuit voltage being applied across the resistor. It's shorter, basically. So that means the short circuit current is 2 amps. So what's saying, what's going on here is that if you apply a short across the resistor, all the currents goes, all the current goes through the short circuit and none of it goes through the resistance. So this, the, the current just kind of circumvents the resistance, resistive path. And uh, I'm sure you've heard of this, you know, You've heard people say, oh, current will take the path of least resistance. Well, you cannot get lower than zero for a practical circuit. And so, therefore, uh, if you have a choice of going uh, going in a 4-ohm path or a 0-ohm path, all of the current goes to the 0-ohm path and just kind of comes around. So, ISC is 2 amps. The short circuit current is, in this case, just 2 amps. And of course, the power absorbed by the resistance is zero watts because VR and IR are both zero and the product is zero. So the resistor consumes, uh, actually, um, uh, or absorbs no power. Um, this is all I wanted to say. Um, so take care and we'll see you next time.